Denny Purdy, University of Northwestern Ohio. Well today we're going to be setting up a modulating gas valve for our train XC95M. Tools needed for this job include a digital dual manometer, a T quarter inch to eighth inch, a set of Allen keys, and an extra tube. After turning off the thermostat, move the locking mechanisms on the bottom door. Remove the bottom door and then remove the upper door. To obtain an accurate manifold pressure measurement, the manifold pressure must be referenced to the burner box since the burner box pressure tap equalizes the gas valve pressure regulator. Locate the manifold pressure cap or plug. After locating the plug, remove the plug on the gas valve. The plug has been removed. After removing the plug, it is now necessary to hook up the 1 8 inch stab fitting to the manifold gas pressure port in order to get our positive pressure from the gas valve. Since the burner box pressure tap equalizes the gas valve pressure regulator, it is now necessary to field install a T between the high heat manifold adjustment and the burner box assembly. We will now hook up the dual digital manometer to the port that we just installed the T into on the negative side of the dual manometer. To enter the setup mode, scroll down to find unit test. Press the enter button Scroll to the right, gas valve setup, and press enter. Push minimum. Are you sure? Yes. Unit is testing. While in setup mode, we now need to remove the low heat manifold pressure adjustment cover. This will allow us access to adjust the low fire rate on the train unit. As we are adjusting the manifold pressure on this train unit, we need to refer back to table 21 to find out what our pressure should be. During the next slide I will show table 21, but the manifold pressure on the low fire that we are looking for is 0.7 plus 0.2. So anywhere between 0.7 and 0.9 inches of water column is perfectly acceptable for low fire on this train unit.
Well, as you can see, we reached 0 0.7 on our low fire manifold gauge. We can now move on to the high fire, but we're going to discuss these tables that we are seeing right here. Depending on the type of unit that you have and the input of that unit is dependent upon what the low fire rate will be for that particular unit and the high fire rate. If you're looking at a 60, 80, 100,000, 120,000 BTU train furnace, we're looking at a 0.7 to 0.9 inches on the low fire rate is acceptable. But for the 120 BTU furnace, it is 0.9 to 1.1. The high fire rate remains the same for this particular brand of train furnace, 3.5 plus or minus 0.2 inches of water column. Well, the propane pressure readings are a little bit different, as you can see. We're only going down to 2.1. We have a plus or minus 0.5 and then 10 across the board on the high fire. After finishing up with the minimum pressure test, set the setup to check the maximum gas pressure test. Well, as you can tell, we are now in high fire. We're under the actual rating that the piece of equipment should be running. So uh, we are going to adjust the high fire rate to get us to the proper uh, manifold pressure of uh, close to 3.5. Now we do have a variation uh, in the uh, 3.5. It's plus or minus 0.2. So uh, it could run from anywhere from 3.3 to 3.7 inches of water column for high fire. Now later on in this video I did hook up two manifold gauges, one on the inlet and one on the outlet because I was having trouble uh, main bringing it up to an acceptable high fire rate and I wanted to see if that was due to uh, the inlet pressure dropping down too far uh, but it adjusted itself and we got it up into the correct spot I've set up two manifolds here one checking inlet pressure and one checking outlet pressure as you can tell by the tables we are well within the 3.5 range well, after finding out our high fire, uh, we're all set. The manifold gas valve is set up properly, and now we can unhook everything and place it back into the correct order in which we took it apart. Well, one of the most important steps that we can do while we're unhooking the manifold lines is to make sure that we have pipe dope on the plugs that are going back in to where we have checked for pressure. Uh, this ensures that there's no leaks uh, on the actual gas valve and uh, safety issue uh, if it was ever to, to leak out there. Well, in reverse, uh, now we're going to be placing the panels back on the unit. Trains are a little bit different than other units because we have to put the top panel in first and then the bottom panel will uh, fit nicely in there. Making sure that we're locking it in place, uh, we don't want it to become loose because there is a door switch in there uh, that will prevent the furnace from working if it does come loose. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed watching this video on how to check the manifold pressure on a modulating train XC. 95 oh, We want to thank the University of Northwestern Ohio in Lima, Ohio for allowing us to come and take a look at the train unit and to actually adjust the modulating valve on there. Their website's popping up right now, so take a look at them. They got an excellent HVAC program.